Good morning, church. We read in the Gospels how Jesus was put under a mock trial and unfairly given the death sentence. The crowd screamed and demanded, kill him. Let Barabbas, the murderer, go free, but kill Jesus. That death sentence to Jesus was given, a death on cross that did not pacify the crowd because they still wanted to mock him and insult him and hurt him, injure him and make him suffer as much as possible. So much of content, anger, rage, hatred. He was beaten mercilessly. He was bleeding profusely. He was hardly recognizable. And yet the crowd wanted to hurt him more. The hatred and anger of people for so many hours on a defenseless man gives us an ugly picture of what sin can do to a human soul. And Jesus was taking it all silently, praying to God that, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. They are ignorant. And we, when Jesus took the sins of mankind, he was separated from God the Father and there was darkness on earth. And we read this in Luke chapter 23, verses 44 to 48. It was now about the sixth hour, that is 12 noon. There was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. While the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two, then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, Certainly this man was innocent. And in verse 48 we read, And all the crowds that had assembled for the spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, they returned home beating their breasts. So why did the crowd gather? So that they could see a spectacle. And what was the spectacle? Our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross dying a shameful death. And people had gathered to see the spectacle. The people at Calvary mourned after they saw what happened with when it became dark for three hours. And the cross divided the mourners into two groups. The first group of mourners was the one who probably hated him or maybe they were neutral towards him. Probably they did something wrong uh, and they were part of this whole conspiracy or maybe they were just mere observers. But when they witnessed this darkness, this group realized that Jesus was the man of God. He was probably a prophet and they feared the consequences, the judgment and punishment of God. And this group left the, that place. This group mourned that he was so dealt so cruelly that he had to go through this excruciating pain after they realized in the darkness for three hours what happened. Even today, many people mourn on a Good Friday and they remember this dreadful day. They remember the agony of Jesus and everything that he has to go through. They mourn thinking that Jesus died as a martyr and this group could only see what was visible to the naked eye. And then there was a second group of mourners. They probably hated him uh, or they were neutral towards him or they loved him as a man, as a teacher. But after a point, they realized that Jesus is the son of God and that Jesus is God and that they could see why he died on the cross. They could realize that it was their sin. That was the reason he was on the cross. They could see their sins on the cross and they could see themselves being crucified on the cross. They realized that it would have been, uh, they would have been crucified, but it was Jesus in place of uh, their crucifixion. And they mourned for the damage that their sin did to Jesus and to God. And they could realize how big this sin was because of it. God had to, do such a, a big thing that was never done before. God the Father and God the Son were separated and Jesus took the sins of the world and he was on the cross. And they could now see that cross is a personal experience to them. They, they were able to connect to the cross. And this group of mourners 
are the one who would soon rejoice because they saw the sins on the cross and they saw themselves on the cross. Now they realized that they were crucified to the world and to the sin and now they could see the invisible power of the cross as Paul mentions in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 24. Even today the same mourners are there uh, which can be divided in two groups. The first group of mourners uh, would not see and experience the power of of cross and and they would they would just uh, feel bad for a few days and then they would be back to normal first peter chapter 3 verse 18 says for christ also suffered once for sins the righteous for the unrighteous that he might bring us to god being put to death in the flesh but made alive in the spirit the ultimate objective of the cross was that Jesus could bring us to God and he was completely able to achieve this. In Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 it writes, Looking to Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So he had this joy that we are going to be saved and now we will come close to God. And because of this joy, he was ready to endure the cross and he was willing to endure the cross, the joy of our salvation that was set before him. The first group of mourners will fear and they will feel sad, but they will miss the power of the cross and they will be not be able to recognize the victory that Jesus had on the cross and hence they will miss the entire experience that Jesus wants us to have. On the other hand, the second group can see and experience the power of the cross in at least four ways. Number one, they could see that it is the power of the cross that made it possible that now they are recon reconciled to God. We read that in Ephesians 2.16. Or number two, they can see and experience that the cross has the power to separate us from the world. Galatians 6 14 which says the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. So that's the ultimate separation. That's the real separation. Number three they can see and experience that the cross has the power to cancel our debts. Colossians 2 14. Or number four they can see and experience that the cross gave them the power to ignore their sinful self. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So this, we have now the power to ignore our sinful self. Praise God for the cross. It is the ultimate, the greatest love story ever told. And every human being deserves to hear this story and the agape love of God. Thank God that we are having a praise march where we have this opportunity to, to talk about the cross and talk about Good Friday. Let us pray that more and more people are uh, able to hear and get this opportunity to hear about why Jesus had to die on the cross and why this day is still called Good Friday. Amen.